I'm Jake Lizio, and I will be hosting this five-day lesson on blues guitar and how to play blues guitar. What is a 12-bar blues? How can you play in a blues band? And how can you interpret and parse and improvise and really work with the blues? This is actually something I think you can learn in five days. And what I've set up here is an entire course. I'm going to be teaching it every day here on YouTube at 2 p.m. And this course is going to uh, go through quite a bit of different knowledge. And uh, like I said, every day here at 2 p.m. And the reason I'm doing it is obvious. A lot of people are stuck at home right now. A lot of people don't have money for lessons. Um, a lot of people can't even go to guitar lessons. And it's pretty boring out there these days. So I figured this would be a good opportunity to do some consistent lessons and also do something productive at the same time, give something back. Uh, how we are going to do this? Well, like I said, every day we're streaming at 2 p.m., but more importantly, I've included resources with this course. I've included quite a few of them, and I want to make sure that you can access them. If you look below in the description, you should find a very, very large PDF file that has like 56 pages, and that is the course that I'm teaching right now. You'll see the, the pages of this PDF um, as I am teaching this course. But in addition to that, I also have some really cool PDFs that I've made for you all. I've got this guy, which is a series of chord shapes and pentatonic shapes and blues shapes that you can use. So that's in the description. I've also included this PDF, which is a quick guide. It is essentially everything we're learning in this course, most of what we're learning in this course, can be summarized in this PDF. So I feel it's a very, very good reference sheet. You know, once you've gone through this course, print this guy out and, uh, you know, take a look at it and it should kind of help you refresh everything we've learned in this course just on that one page. So those two are included in the resource pack. And additionally, we have quite a few MP3s included in this as well. So who is this course for? Well, it's not for everybody. It is a beginner's based course. So you don't need much to, to go along with this. You should just really be able to start, you, you should be able to play your guitar. I'm not teaching you how to hold a pick. I'm not gonna teach you how to form a chord. That stuff you're gonna kinda have to know already, but you don't need any theory and you really don't need any advanced skills to go through this course. And to really make sure that I'm not wasting your time, I want to go through right now the syllabus of what we're actually going to learn. And that way, you know, you understand what's actually happening here is it going to be worth your time so um the topics covered in this entire course are the one four five chords you need to know one four five not just for blues but for any kind of music one four five you need to be able to find those chords instantly on your guitar so we'll go over that and we'll go over the basic 12 bar blues that omnipresent structure that happens everywhere we're going to take a little look at rhythm right understanding the difference between a shuffle rhythm and a straight rhythm six eight versus four four we're also going to take a look at uh, things like the quick change and the turnaround. Very simple concepts if you know a 12-bar blues. Once you've played a 12-bar, it gets a little boring because you're using the same chords over and over again. So chord substitutions help us play more chords and do different varieties of things. We're going to look at ninths, thirteenths chords, and some altered dominance as well. And once you are playing a chord, you know, how do you play that chord? Are you going to strum it? you Are going to pick it? You're going to palm mute it? There's all sorts of different techniques, and I want to go through some different varieties of techniques for rhythm guitar. We're going to do a mini course on pentatonic minor and pentatonic major and the blues scale. We're also going to take a look at minor seventh chords. How do we use those in the context of a minor blues? Minor blues, really fun stuff, really great alternative to our regular blues. Then we will be leaving our guitar and we will be thinking about what is the role of the bass and what is the role of the keys? Uh, you know, you want to be present uh, of what or you want to be aware of what the other band members are doing and what they should be doing. And that's really important stuff to know if you want to play in a blues setting. Then lastly, I'll give you some advanced topics that you can explore all on your own. You know, where do you go after this? Because this isn't all of blues. This is just a crash course. And, you know, you can go infinitely far uh, after this, you know, course. There's a lot of different places you could go. So I'll give you some next steps after that. For today, though, this is a five-day course. Today, all we're learning is the 12-bar structure. We're going to learn our 1-4-5 chords. We're going to learn how do we find our 1-4-5 chords instantly and immediately. We're doing that on the sixth string, and we're doing that on the fifth string. Uh, what are dominant seventh chords? How do we play dominant seventh chords and how do they fit into our 12 bar blues? And then we're going to look at straight rhythms versus swing rhythms, six, eight versus four, four. And I'll give you plenty of examples here on the guitar and in the real world of, you know, how, where we hear our 12 bar blues. Okay. So if that stuff is unknown to you, I really recommend you stick around for day one uh, of this course. If you already know that stuff though, you might be able to skip day one. However, you might be able to pick up some tips along. Um, I'm expecting this lesson will probably take 20 to 30 minutes all the way through. So um, you might pick up something along the way. All right, let's get started. Our 12 bar blues is 
12 measures of music, all right? It only consists of three different chords, the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. If you don't know what that is, that's fine. We'll talk about that real soon. But the important thing to note is it's really only three chords. And it repeats over and over and over again. Songs that repeat over and over and over again, we call that strophic form in music. And 12-bar blues are a great example of popular strophic form music. It just keeps happening over and over again, and eventually it ends where it started, on this chord right here, the one chord. And this is extremely common. I can't stress to you how many 12-bar blues songs exist out there in this cookie cutter format and a lot of musicians they cringe at the idea of oh it's cookie cutter music but you know nobody thinks of of blues as cookie cutter music you know we think of the blues as really soulful music yet so much of the blues is this structure right here in front of you so we're looking at it right now and we might not know what these one four five chords are but that's fine we'll talk about that just know that every one of these uh, represents one measure okay so like this is a measure of the one chord that would be like four beats if you're in four four a measure of the one chord measure of the one chord measure of the one chord a measure of the four chord and another measure of the four chord you get it now what the heck is a one four five well whatever major chord we're starting on that's the one chord Okay, this is a shortcut. By the way, this is a, a deep topic, but we're really, really cutting it short here. So let's pick any chord. I'm going to pick uh, G. All right, I put my, my finger on G, and I play a major chord. That will be my one chord. I just play G major. That'll be my one chord. If I want to find the four chord, well, all I do is I ascend to the fourth. Whoops. I ascend to the fourth note of the major scale, and then I play a major chord. All right? So ascending to the fourth note of the major scale sounds like this. One, two, three, four. And now all I have to do is play a major chord there. And that would give me a C major. Now, to find the five chord, I just ascend to the fifth note of the major scale. One, two, three, four, five. That gives me a D, and I play a major chord. So in the key of G, because I started on G, my one, four, five chords would be G, C, and D. And I could play those any way I want. I could play them G, C, D. I could play them on the piano. It's just one, four, five. But the goal here is to find those chords immediately and in every single key. And there's a really, really easy shortcut for that kind of stuff. All right. The shortcut here is this. Find a fret on your sixth string and play a major chord. OK, so I'm not even going to look at my guitar. I'm not even looking. I'm just grabbing this fret. Whatever fret this is, I'm playing it and I'm going to play a major chord. I don't have perfect pitch, so I don't even know what note I'm playing. I'm guessing it's B flat. But either way, I'm playing my one chord. Now, to find my four chord, all I do is go to the same fret on the fifth string. You see this? This is the same fret right here. So I'm going to go to that same fret and then I'm going to play this major chord and that gives me my four chord. So now, even though I don't know the names of my chord, I don't even know what chord I'm playing, but I know it's a one, and I know it's a four, and I know it's a one, and I know it's a four. And you can hear how good one and four sound next to each other. To find the five, it's as simple as just bumping up my four chord a whole step. Just move it up two frets. So if this is four, then that is five. So my one, four, five chords were one, four, five. And now that I'm looking at my hand, I can see it actually was B flat. I was starting on the sixth fret for a B flat major. This chord here, the four chord, ends up being an E flat. I know that because my index finger is playing E flat. And then this chord right here ends up being an F because my first finger is playing an F. So we've got one, four, five with a root on the sixth string. I just found one, four, five in B flat. I could find one, four, five on F. Let's start on F and you do one, same fret, four, five. Instant access to the one, four, five chords by understanding what you see on the screen. You don't even need to know the names of the chords. I know that, that sounds crazy, but a lot of times it's more about knowing the function of the chord. Is it a one? Is it a four? Or is it a five? As opposed to knowing the name of the chord. Now, what if you are somewhere way up high on your guitar? What if you're on E flat? E flat is my 11th fret. That's my one chord in E flat. If I want to do, I mean, that's awkward to begin with. And if I want to do my four chord, I have to do this, and then I have to do this. I mean, that's, I mean, you take a look at my fingers here really quick. You'll see that's a little awkward right there. You know, I'm not, there's not a lot of space up here for my fingers to be doing this kind of thing. So I don't want to play one, four, five like this. That's really awkward. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a way to play one, four, five with a root on the fifth string. This is extremely important. You know, you're going to be playing blues jams in A and G and E flat. You can't have one way to do it, all right? You need to be able to start on the fifth string and build your one, four, five chords. You need to be able to start on the second string and build, or uh, I'm sorry, the fifth string and build your one, four, five chords. So to do it on the fifth string, it's actually pretty simple, all right? Let's find a fret on our fifth string. 
I'm going to pick, uh, hey, here's the fifth fret, all right? And that's D, right? So here's what I'm doing. Pretend this is a D major. This is the fifth fret. All I do is I go back two frets. Just jump backwards two frets to the sixth string, all right? That takes me to the note G, and now play a major chord. And then to find the five chord, the five chord will always be two frets over. All right, so here I've got one is G, D, four is G, and five is A. One, four, five. One, four, five. Those are the only three chords we need for a 12-bar blues. And now you can find them on the fifth string, and you can find them on the sixth string. But keep in mind, that's it. That's all you need to know for a 12-bar blues. Uh, we could go back to our 12-bar blues right now and listen to what that sounds like. And actually, you know what? Let's do that. Let's run back here and play this with all major chords. You're going to think, hey... That doesn't actually sound that bluesy, and you're right, and we're going to make it bluesy here in a little bit. But let's play this format, and let's sub in the chords I just played. Like I said, D is my one. So I'm going to play a D measure, measure of D, measure of D, measure of D. Here's going to be a measure of G, measure of G, measure of D, measure of D. And then finally, I'll have an A, and then a G, and then a D. All right. Let's listen to what that sounds like. Starting from the top, I'll go one, two, three, four, D. Again, again, again. Now the four chord, G. Back to one. And now the five, A. And four, and back to one. And then all repeats again. Right? Now, like I said, that doesn't sound bluesy. That sounds more poppy and rocky. And believe it or not, there's a lot of 12-bar blues formats in rock songs and in pop songs so uh this is a format that goes beyond just blues this is an extremely popular format but you hear how good that sounds right however it doesn't sound bluesy and let's face it we're talking about the blues here so how do we get this to sound bluesy it's very simple the answer dominant seventh chords you see when you take a major chord like let's take a c major right i've got this right here eighth fret bar chord let's take a c major major chords are very bright he's very bold it's very uh very like light and happy chord progression right it's got a lot of flavor to it right and a lot of um, happiness to it but it doesn't have any blues to it how do you make it bluesy it's very very simple you just add in the flatted seventh and a flatted seventh well you go up to the seventh note of the scale one two three four five six seven and then you flat it all right so we had our flatted seventh we're adding that to our c major chord what we get is a dominant seventh chord. So that flatted seven is a B flat, right? And any dominant seventh chord is as simple as adding the flatted seventh. The shortcut, instead of going up seven notes and then flatting it, here's my shortcut. You know, we started on C, just go back a whole step, go back two frets, and whatever note that is, that's a B flat. That's the note you're going to add to your major chord to get the dominant seventh chord. And dominant seventh chords, think of like your major chord and think of somebody who threw some dirt on it, right? Right? You take this happy major chord and you get it a little dirty. And you got this nasty seventh chord instead. And that's where that blues flavor comes from, right? You can already hear that's just a bluesier, grittier sound than pure majestic major. So the idea here is we take a 12-bar blues and we turn all of the chords into seventh chords, all right? Like this one, our C would become C7. And uh, if we had our four chord here, E flat or F major, F major would just become F7. And hopefully you already hear all of this blues flavor is starting to come out, right? So to get the one, four, five chords, it's the exact same step as before. Look at how easy this is. If I want to find a 12 bar blues in A, all right, well, find A on the sixth string. Boom, here it is, play a seventh chord. Find the four chord by going to the same fret on the next string, the fifth string, and play a seventh chord. And then to find the five chord, I just slide that guy over two frets. And now I've got my one chord. Then the four chord here, back to the one chord, and then five, and then four, and then one. And if we want to do this on the fifth string, it's pretty simple as well. I find my root somewhere here on the fifth string, right? And then if I want to find my four chord, I just jump two frets back onto the sixth string, and I play a seventh chord. And then to find the five chord, I can just slide that guy up two frets, and I've got my five chord. So one, four, five on the sixth string right here, and one, four, five on the fifth string right there. All right? Pretty simple stuff, in my opinion. And now we can really start using this kind of stuff. All right? Uh, we are going to look at an example of a straight 4-4 12-bar blues in A.
So here's our format, 1, 1, 1, 1, 4, 4, 1, 1, 5, 4, 1, 1, right? And I've written in the names of the chords here. You can see that, oops, you can see that our first chord will be A7, and then our four chord will be D7, our five chord will be E7. Each one of these chords indicates one measure. And since I'm telling you right out that this is in 4-4, four, four, that means there's four beats for each one of these measures. So one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, and then I switch measures, right? Now, when somebody talks about a straight rhythm, what they mean is that we have two even notes per beat, right? My beat was this, one, two, three, four. That is my beat. And right now, I'm like playing one note per beat. But if I play two notes per beat, listen, bum, 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 bum. And those are straight eighth notes. They are even. They're not like herky-jerky. They're not pulsating weird. They're completely machine gun fire steady. You need to know that because we're going to talk about a swing here pretty soon. And you need to know that straight rhythms totally steady. So I can play eight eighth notes for every one of these measures, right? And I could do any tempo I want. There's no tempo for the blues. You could do a slow tempo, you could do a fast tempo. Uh, but the important thing is to try to vary those rhythms, right? You know, you really want to vary those rhythms. And I'm realizing again that uh, everything is covered up here. So, you know, take a look down here. We've got my one chord at the end. We've got my one chord at the end there. Um, and if, this is all in the PDF. So if you don't see something on here, definitely download the PDFs below and look at things there. So let's take a listen to a straight 4-4 in A. I'm going to do some simple eighth note patterns, and I'm going to vary the rhythms, and I'm going to do two even eighth notes per beat. One and two. Ready, go. It's one and two and three and four and one and two and three. Now the D7. A7. The five chord. D7. Back to the A. Right. Oh, I threw in an E at the end. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to throw in an E at the end. I, I, that's called a turnaround. We'll talk about that in the next. Uh, we'll talk about that in the next video. But I could have done an E at the end. I accidentally did. I wanted to stay on an A though. So you hear how good that sounds? Straight eighth notes. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And three. That sounds great. So what about a swing? What about something with a shuffle? That's a totally different feel, right? Now my eighth notes are no longer steady. That was the whole idea of a straight rhythm. Now my eighth notes have this pulse to it. You have like a long, short, long, short, long. And the way we normally count that is one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four. So if this is my quarter note, one, two, three, four then swung eighth notes sound like this they're gonna sound like one a two a three a four a one a two a three a four um so uh really quick i did take a look over at the video and somebody's saying they can't hear me please let me know if the audio is good uh and yes swung is a word believe it or not but uh yeah so we got one a two a three a four that is a shuffle rhythm now i'll switch back to one and two and three and four and these are straight rhythms back to one a two a three a four straight shuffled straight Right? So you really want to know the difference between that straight rhythm and that shuffle rhythm. I definitely recommend you practice it all on your own. Uh, keep in mind the shuffle is based on triplets. If you think about three notes per beat, if you think about one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Now, if you only played the one and the three, all right, one, three, one, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one. That's where the triplet, or that's where the shuffle comes from, is a triplet pattern. So uh, it's important to know that. Now, let's find out a uh, the one, four, five chords in the key of E flat. All right, I've got. Uh, I'm gonna hide this here for us a little bit so we can see. We've got E flat for the one chord. Our four chord will be uh, A flat seven. Back to E flat for the one chord, and then we've got a B flat for the five, A flat seven for the four, and then back to E flat. So let's listen to this with a shuffled rhythm instead, all right? We're going to have one. We'll do like this. A one, two, three, four. A one, a two, a three, a four. A one, a two, three, a four. A one, two, three, a four. A flat. Back to E flat. Last line. Two, a 
hear. That feels bluesy. Compare it to the major stuff we played earlier, right? That didn't sound bluesy. That, to me, sounds bluesy. And the swing really helps out. The swing has a lot of blues flavor to it. So you add some swing in with your 12-bar blues. With those seventh chords, you know, it's starting to get, you know, that's where the blues flavor really, really comes from. So let us move on to our last example, which is going to be an E blues in 6-8. Six, 6-8, eight. Six, eight, uh, each measure ra- rings out for 6 counts. I think that's the easiest way to think about it as your beginner. Instead of counting to four, we're counting one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I could just strum on every one of those. I could do, uh, by the way, my one, four, five chords, if I look at E, I've got E right here, and then I've got A7 down here, and then B7. So the only three chords I need for an E blues are E7 on the one, A7 for the four, and then uh, B7 for the five. So if I throw those together and if I strum them six six drums each, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, sounds pretty good. The key is to accent the four beat and the one beat. Oops. Uh, the one beat and the four beat, that's like the real key to six, eight timing. So listen, if I count one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, right? So that really, really sounds good. Now, if I do... Um, like a little more staccato. Listen to how good this sounds. If I do one, two, three, four, five, six, Right, that sounds really, really nice. So I think six eight works great for like a slow blues. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful little uh, you know flavor. And to demonstrate for you uh, what we can do with this, let's actually put this stuff to work. All right, let's pull up our. Uh, we'll do a little on-site demo shall we here is ableton live and i'm just going to record myself playing some rhythm guitar i'm going to play that 12 bar in e all right and here's what it's going to sound like i'm going to go one two three four five six one two three four one two three four five six one two So I just recorded a 12-bar blues there, and uh, I'm going to copy-paste that. All right, we'll just kind of take that same thing, and we'll loop it over and over and over again, and then we can turn off that annoying metronome. And let's listen to what it sounds like. And I have actually prepared a little bit of organ here. Do you see what this is doing? This is doing the exact same chords that we heard before. And uh, it's just played on an organ patch on Reason software. So if we listen to this now, I'll just kind of throw in a little bit of distorted organ. Listen to this sounds like. Right? And if we kind of get these to sync up now, here's our... Oh, I don't think I have this at the right tempo. Let's try this again. Oh, yeah, something isn't starting at the right time. Let's try like that. Is that better? Oh, almost. I realize that this chord needs to be here. This should be better. I guess I didn't prepare my track that well. Yeah, that's better. Now, um, you know, it sounds all right, but what about some drums? I've also prepared like a simple little drum part here. And like I said, we're in 6-8 timing. So you're going to see six beats per measure and the drums are going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And take a listen to what that sounds like adding in the drums now. Not bad, right? There's no bass on this, you know, we can add bass, but really uh, what we've got here is a jam in uh, E. So it would be really simple for me to just take the E pentatonic minor scale and start soloing the top of this, right? And we will talk about pentatonic minor in future videos, but it's as simple as literally just playing. Like
simple stuff. I mean, you can hear, guess if if I didn't have a robotic drummer and if I didn't have a robotic organ player, that would actually sound like real blues. The problem is that I've got this, you know, synthetic fake sounding instruments going on there. I think the only thing that sounds good is the guitar. And the guitar was done very, very easily, very, very quickly. You notice that, right? It wasn't very, very hard for me to put together that guitar track. So uh, that is the idea of the 12 bar blues. And this really gets down to most of what I wanted to teach you. I wanted to make sure in this first lesson, you understand what is a 12 bar blues. And remember, it's all about this format right here. I'm subbing in this, uh, you know, with E7 right now, but it could be any single chord progression you possibly want could you know or any key you possibly want you could do this in f you could do it in g you could do it in a i don't care but you need to know how to make a 12 bar blues you uh need to have an idea of what a shuffle is and what a swing is um you also uh want to know you know your one four five chords and dominant sevens how is a dominant seventh built that kind of stuff very very important so where are you going to, uh, what should you do here? Well, first off, I would recommend you really try to predict when the chords are going to change. I want to tell you a little story here because this was life changing for me. When I was about 16 is when I learned about the 12 bar blues. And I went to a, uh, a blues, I went to a barbecue restaurant, right? And they only played blues music at this barbecue restaurant. And I had only learned the blues for a little while, but I was sitting there and I didn't know any of these songs, but I could tell I can hear when the chord is going to change. Even though I don't know this song, I know the chord's going to change right now. And I was like freaking myself out. I thought I was like psychic, you know, because it's like this is a skill I never had before as a musician. To have never heard a song and already know what chord is coming next, that felt to me like a supernatural ability. And it really only developed because I learned the 12-bar blues and I learned that every blues band uses a 12-bar. So what I'd like you to do is turn on Blues Pandora, go on Blue Spotify, and try to predict when the chord is going to change and try to predict if you can guess what it's going to sound like you know you should start getting an idea that the four chord feels a certain way and that the five chord feels a certain way you know that five chord's got a lot of tension behind it so you know try to hear it in your ears in your mind's ear before it actually happens and that's a great way to practice what you've just learned here in this lesson also you can use the following songs to practice because these are all 12 bar blues we got tutti frutti by little richard johnny be good chuck berry pride and joy stevie ray vaughn hound dog elvis presley sweet home chicago this one does not look like the others, right? <laughs> Still haven't found what I'm looking for. How in the world is that a uh, how in the world is that a 12 bar? Well, it is a 12 bar, believe it or not, and um, it's just not a blues. It's a really poppy rocking version of a 12 bar but if you listen to it you'll hear it still follows the 12 bar format. so I feel that's a great uh, little list of songs to listen to here to hear this 12 bar thing in action and uh let's see here for our end of our day one practice all right because this is pretty much concluding the lesson part of things what i'd like you to do if you are serious about learning the blues and if you're serious about taking this course um and really you know getting as much out of it as you can here's what i'd like you to do write out the chords physically on paper write out the names of the chord of a 12 bar blues in at least one natural key. I would do it for multiple ones, but write it out, a 12 bar in A, and just write it out on paper. You know, writing things has an ability to forge neural connections that just reading it doesn't. So uh, try to do that also in a flat key, right? Try something like A flat, E flat, G flat, something weird like that. Also, play a 12 bar in any key, all right? So just get on your guitar and play a 12 bar in any key with a shuffle, with a swing, really practicing that swing rhythm, and then also practicing doing it again with a straight feel instead. Try to play the same 12 bar in two different positions, right? So let's say you got a, a 12 bar here in G, right? Also learn how to play that 12 bar here in G, right? So here's one, four, five in G. Here's one, four, five in G, right? Uh, try to um, find your own examples of 12 bar blues. You probably know a 12 bar blues somewhere in your own world, right? But it's just not... Um, it's maybe just like under your surface memory. If you really start thinking about it, you might be able to discover, oh yeah, this song is a 12 bar blues. And you start realizing that once you become familiar with the structure. So see if you can discover one all on your own. And then go on YouTube, plenty of opportunities here on YouTube to go onto a 12 bar jam and just play along. You know, just type in 12 bar blues and uh, you know, try to figure out the key and play along. And some of these 12 bars will be more advanced. We will talk in the next lesson about advanced 12 bar blues. So you might not be able to get along with it, but that's good. You know, you're going to run into new things and some of them you might be able to get just right away. So that's why results might vary. You know, you might get some that aren't really the 12 bar as I've taught it. It's more advanced than that. Um, what we're going to take a look at uh, next week, if or I'm sorry, not next week, 
I'm used to teaching lessons once a week, not every single day. What we're going to take a look at tomorrow is improving the 12 bar blues. How do we use, uh, what is a quick change and a turnaround? I accidentally started using turnarounds in this video here today. What are chord substitutions? What can we do beyond just seventh chords? Because seventh chords are cool, but we want to get some ninths in there. We want to get some thirteenths in there. All sorts of cool stuff that we can, you know, play around with. Uh, seven sharp nine, other cool chord. And we're going to take a look at some rhythm guitar concepts. How do we play rhythms in a band setting? How can we make our rhythms actually sound interesting and cool.